Hey everybody, and uh, of course, uh, it's a day early because of uh, El Paso Comic Con commitments that we have uh, here at, at Dialogue, but uh, it is still Annie's Adventures. Here's Annie Perez. Hey guys, welcome back to this week's podcast. Thank you so much for joining me at home. If you guys have any questions for my awesome guests, just go on and ask in the comments. I am live on Facebook as well. Just go to my Facebook page and you can join us. Um, again, if you have questions, ask in the comments and I'll get those answered for you. I have some amazing guests today. Um, Art feeds the soul. So we have another co-op gallery in oh, i'm not sure if the, we'll, we'll figure that term, term, terminology out right now <laughs> and then of course donuts feed the soul as well and we have weirdos <laughs> bakery here uh so thank you so much for tuning back in um i'm just gonna introduce you guys a mono and weirdos <laughs> all right guys so I, as always i'd like to start the podcast with the same question um i'm in marketing i work at leo marketing any business here at home if you guys um, need anything please reach out to me we are a local full service marketing agency here in central el paso leo marketing i can help you with everything from brokering deals for tv radio billboard print and ott at no cost to you to use me to negotiate those deals for you i can also help you with social media management websites video production graphic design photography seo google branding everything and anything under the sun i got you here in el paso we also have the best video studio here in el paso and and video rental equipment so our video production is cinema quality at El Paso prices keep that in mind whenever you need it whenever you're ready to go to the next level call me 915-920-4388 but now let's go on and jump into your all's marketing question so I do like to start my podcast um, asking all the businesses a marketing question um, what type of marketing works for you guys? What have you found maybe doesn't work for you? And do you have any tips or advice for business owners out there who are looking, whether they have a business currently or they're looking to make that jump, you know? Um, so at Amano Artist Co-op, um, what type of marketing have you guys done? What works for you? What doesn't? All right. Well, first, I'm going to introduce myself. Yes, please. Susan. Uh, I am Susan. Uh, I go by Squishy. I am an artist here with uh, Amano. Uh, I also do their graphic design um, flyers and stuff like that. So, uh, well, where to start? So, honestly, Instagram. Instagram has been a, a platform that really helps artists uh, show their work, especially with the tags. Uh, for sure, Twitter works. I know that Twitter may be, be directed for a younger audience, but definitely it's it's a place uh, that you can share your stuff. And you guys use Twitter here in El Paso? No, actually, okay. uh, we, we're looking forward to that. So we're managing one platform at a time, and then we'll develop mm -hmm. that. So we have a brand. Uh, that's another thing. I think it's very important for people to brand themselves, not specifically to be, like, stern, but so people can uh, tell like what you're, what you are, you know, like your color palette really determines uh, what business you are and stuff like that. So that's another thing that I found that works. Uh, mailing lists are very important. I know that people are like, well, people don't use mailings now. Yes, they do. I use one. I have one specifically for all the museums, all the projects, everything that I follow. And that's how I keep um, informed. Hmm. Yes. So those right are the on. ones that are. Yeah, you, you're bringing yeah. some new stuff to the table. Yes. Definitely. All right. Um, and and Brian, anything that you found any different as far as that goes for marketing? I think she she kind of keyed in on it, and we've we've talked about these things at Amano. Um, you know, I had a Facebook long ago, uh, but once I started dealing with uh, Instagram as a platform, uh, for whatever reason, your followers are a, a lot larger than let's say Facebook. Um, so, for example, if we post a flyer, typically on Facebook, you might get like eight likes, you know, and I'm like, oh, wow, why is that? And then if you go to Instagram and you look at those likes, you might be anywhere in 200 or above. And then you also see that many more people are sharing that on Instagram. Mm -hmm, so it's mm -hmm. kind of like a tree, mm -hmm, you know, you, mm -hmm. you put these flyers out there, people who are interested in art. Uh, gonna share even, even some of the other galleries, we all try to support uh, other galleries, and we hope that other galleries galleries support us as well, which has been happening. Um, anytime events are going on, I think everybody in the art community tries to help one another, yeah. and so it just branches out like right. a tree, and that's how the public kind of finds out what's going on, uh, who you are. Um, so I, I've kind of found that you know Instagram has 
has been the one thing that's been working well for us. You know, uh, Susan makes really amazing uh, flyers for us. You know, we talk about, uh, you know, there's a lot of apps out there where you could you could make your flyers for free. Um, but, you know, just coming from UTEP and you see graphic designers making r really great um, imagery, I said, well, why not? do graphic design instead of using the, the free apps. And I think anybody who uses those free apps will know like, oh, I, I use that. You know. That same template yeah, that you yeah, did you last know, week. So yeah. You want to you wanna be original. Mm -hmm. um, Especially when you're an artist co-op, right? right? No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we have artists on hand. Yeah. Let's utilize that. Um, 100%. But also we talked about too, like uh, when you're making flyers, and I noticed this just when I was at uh, the other galleries I was operating out of was that when you make a flyer, um, you can make one flyer and it can be solid. Um, and you can post that over and over and over for two or three weeks. But I've, I've noticed that people tend to lose interest. So what we do is uh, we make many flyers. With different m versions. With many, yeah, many different versions, uh, many different uh, That's smart. works in the background. So that way, even if, you know, we're always rotating the imagery so that people are like, oh, it's something new, something fresh. Right, it doesn't look stagnant. Yeah, and yeah. like, I've already seen that. I can just scroll past yeah. it. Yeah, and that's just something Sorry. that's been learned over time. Sure, you know? sure. Yeah. Um, and do you have any tips or advice for business owners out there or people who are looking to take the plunge, currently have a business, whatever it is? You know, we were, uh, I was talking with Mike Fierro, who is actually uh, my partner at Amano. Um, and he helps me. Uh, well, I help him manage the building. Uh, we co-manage the building. Uh, but we were talking today about, you know, jumping in with two feet, uh, yeah. just taking chances, uh, surrounding yourself by positive people um, and, you know, and being firm on what your values are in your business. I think uh, that's paramount. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to establish a place that, uh, you know, people are going to want to come visit, you know, and if internally there's something telling you like, hey, you know, this type of music might not be a fit for our, our space or this kind of artwork might not be a fit for this space that's okay you know and and you have to stand firm on on what you're doing what your, your view business. your images yeah, yeah yeah because a lot of times people get really upset well you know i want to get in there and it's like you know well you that's why you put uh you put that out right off the bat you know this is what we're doing here this is our vision um and this is kind of like we want it to be family friendly we want, mm -hmm. we want the community to come in and you know a lot of times uh you have to you have to tell people no. So I guess that's my thing too is don't be afraid to say no. That's that's uh, a good one. Yeah, it's you know, important because sometimes people get really upset with you, and it's like, hey, you know, not that I don't enjoy what you do, um, but you know, we have to stay true to what your what brand our is are yeah. here and what we're doing here. Yeah, and and you know, not everybody's a good fit for everything, and then mm -hmm. but it's also you guys help each other. You know, maybe try this gallery or you know, whatever it is, uh, when we'll get more into that right now too, because mm -hmm. I wanted to ask if you offer like classes or, you know, different mm -hmm. uh, workshops and stuff oh, like that. But that's a really good one. J don't be afraid to say no. I mean, especially this is your baby. You, you yeah. just jumped head first in. Um, and so you have to stick true to what you want it to be. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And I do have an idea as far as the Facebook, um, you know, it's just our organic reach is just 1% or less mm -hmm. of our current followers are following. So, um, you never know who's seeing what, right? Yeah. Like, as I've noticed in on Annie's Adventures too on Facebook, I get less interaction now on Facebook than I do on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it's all about the algorithm. They know what they have work, so they want you to invest in it. They want you to do those paid posts, the sponsored posts, mm -hmm. the boosts, all that stuff, play the game, right? Um, but, yeah, and especially for visuals and for food, I just see Instagram being, mm -hmm. being where it's at. But, all right, well, thank you very much. No all right, Andrea, thank you so much for joining me. Hello, I'm Andrea, one half of Weirdos Bakery. Yes. Uh, sorry, my other half isn't here, so if I don't function correctly, it's because of that. Oh, you're good, you're good. I'm sorry we couldn't hop her in today. Um, but, but please give a big hug for me. I love what you guys do. I've been following you before you opened, and yeah. it's so cool to watch you guys just, like, blossom. It's such a cool bakery. Uh, it has a really cool vibe in there, and the, the pastries are just, like, oh so good you guys have to do it you have to do it so um what type of marketing have you guys done what works for you what doesn't work for you and do you have any tips or advice for business owners being so new because i mean we're 
only like eight months old. Yeah. Um, I mean, and you're a pandemic baby too. Yeah. You like started during the pandemic, which you guys did as well, which <laughs> I'm just like in awe of you guys, what you all are, are doing and accomplishing freaking like, I want to give you high fives all day long <laughs> and you're killing it. So, so tell me, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. Uh, we started out really small and we didn't have a lot of budget to work with for marketing. So all of our marketing has really been from Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Mainly Instagram, like you guys mentioned earlier, we get more interactions and more uh, shares, likes, all on Instagram than on Facebook. We notice the big difference of like, oh, this same post gets a lot more likes on Instagram than it does on Facebook, mm -hmm. even though it's the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have tried the like sponsored posts on Facebook, they didn't really work that well for us, hmm. but it was also when we first like opened, so we also didn't have as much of a following as we do now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we would like to try it again, and we'd like to branch out into different types of marketing mm -hmm. as well, uh, getting into like billboards or even like certain magazines or things like that, just getting our name out there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been like a little bit of an iffy thing for us just because of the baby steps, right? Like your marketing budget grows as your business goes. Like our, our number one client or not number one, but our largest client at Leo marketing is wind daddy sauce house. They started us with us with one location and they recently went franchised at the first restaurant franchise to come out of El Paso. Um, we help them with all their nearly, I don't even know, 30 something locations in El Paso, Las Cruces, Mexico, Austin, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, and oncoming locations. They did not start off with the budget that they have now. You know, mm -hmm. you have to grow as the budget will grow as you grow. Um, so you'll get there but it's good that you understand that social media isn't the end-all be-all and you need to expand it there is a time and a place and El Paso is not like any other market out there what works in California New York Chicago Austin is not gonna work in El Paso because we are manana manana people yeah. that is a very real thing we are last minute that's why concerts cancel on us all the time because they don't believe we're selling tickets even though we buy our tickets like the last week yeah. <laughs> to an event right so uh, yeah there's a time and a place billboards are definitely something to like to me, I think top dogs in El Paso are paid posts on social media. And there's a there's a right way, and there's like the boost way and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and then billboards are are again, I think top dogs in El Paso. Everybody lives in the car here. But yeah. um, do you have any tips or advice for business owners? Just jump in, honestly, because we've had so many people ask us. Uh, it's like, how do you start? Like mm -hmm. they wanted to start their own thing, and really, like our best advice is just go for just it just do it because if you keep like saying oh but i need to wait for this or i need to wait for this i need to wait for the right moment it's, the perfect moment's never going to come you just need to go for it yeah i love it yeah. my nina used to tell me by waiting for the perfect opportunity you disallow yourself opportunities that could have been perfect yeah. awesome all right so let's go on and start with our deep dive let's all go right. on a deep dive <laughs> with our artists here we have susan and brian with a mono artist co-op um, how do we find you? Where are you located? How did this start? What do you offer? All that good stuff. Give us, give us the dirt. All right. So, well, like I said before, I do have a studio with Amano. Um, so they provide spaces for artists. Uh, you can get the space how big you want, how small you want. Uh, honestly, it's a really great location because it's off of the other street. Um, very, very central. So everything's basically like 20 to 30 minutes away. Mm -hmm. uh, I live Far Horizon. So for me, being having a studio here in the middle of El Paso, it's it's actually a great opportunity. Yeah. Um, I really like it there. People are so friendly. Uh, I met a lot of new people already. So that's networking for you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're an artist, networking is your best friend. Uh, you can always uh, collaborate with these people. So it's Amano. Uh, the name came because everything's made by hand, mm. so Amano, right? Um, it, it's pretty simple. Uh, we really like, um, well, I believe we really like that uh, collaborating with each other. And I know that Brian, this is something that I think they've, they've done a couple of times already. It's uh, artist critiques and we support each other. Uh, you know, we give honest critiques and... Uh, Especially, you know, like after school when you graduate, um, you don't have that. You don't have your classmates to, mm -hmm. hey, you know what's up? Uh, I have some new artwork. Do you want to check it out? They're like, oh, I work today. Yeah. Oh, well, 
uh, can you tomorrow? I was like, oh, I work tomorrow. Right, you know, so right. it's it always is this thing. So having this uh, community for artists there, it's it's just amazing because even if maybe some people can't make it, uh, other five can, and you know we can talk about our art and stuff like that, and we can <laughs> grow as a group, you know, um, and you know bring new ideas to the table. Maybe something that y- you maybe are not were not willing to like try before. Now you can because you're like. Actually, he makes it seem so easy. Right. I want to try it now, yeah, you know, and yeah. things like that. So it's they like, inspire you. Yes, and it's like a new opportunity for, for you to grow. Um, as a person, as an artist, uh, the city grows as well, you know. I really and I really enjoy That's awesome. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, very cool. You have anything to add to that, Brian? Yeah, so uh, I was an artist at uh, Casa Ortiz uh, for the better part of the entire COVID deal. Um, and I Beautiful was there. gallery you guys yeah, set amazing. up. Yeah. There's your plug, Casa Ortiz. Yes. <laughs> you have to. Yeah. Say hi to Gabe and Diego. <laughs> um, but I was an artist there for a while, and uh, my daughter was coming out for the summer uh, to visit, and I was picking up a, a couple of my last courses for UTEP. So uh, instead of holding down my room there, I just decided uh, that, you know what, I'm not going to have the time, and it, I don't know, it's, it's unfair for me to just hold this space. Sure. And I'm all about uh, sharing, uh, especially in the artist community. Uh, so I, I left Casa Ortiz, um, and then I took my two-month break, and Mike Fierro called me and said, hey, uh, I just picked up a lease here, and I was wondering if you would help me manage this building. I didn't plan on taking on any... Uh, Big any, endeavors any, like anything that? Anything, because <laughs> I have five classes at UTEP right now. You're, you're, uh, you teach at, at UTEP? No, I don't teach at oh, UTEP. Okay, I'm, I'm going to school to teach. Oh, awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm Very looking cool. for high school. Uh, but, great. you know, when I when I stepped into Amano, I, I was still working on my own personal work, but I've been taking, actually, I've taken a break from artwork. Just uh, we're cleaning up that building, uh, bringing artists in, uh, just building it, mm-hmm. you know, just building the space. Um, and I was talking with Susan a while back about, you know, when I got out of the army, uh, in thanks for your service. Thank you. Uh, you know, that I was running around downtown with my portfolio, trying to find a place to showcase mm. and nobody was letting me in, you know, so that takes me off. <laughs> so, you know, over time, I just, I feel like I, I, whether it was at UTEP or EPCC, uh, I just felt like I was starting to try and prove myself. Um, and then I just started showing showing wherever I could. That would be my advice for artists is take it. Yeah. Any any opportunity, whether it's a pop up or or anything, take every opportunity yes. you possibly can. Same thing for uh, school. Anytime there's like a trip or they're inviting you to go to a gallery to uh, witness, you know, many other artists, take all those opportunities, yes. learn, um, put that in your toolbox. But that's what Amano is all about. Is uh, we're not. Uh, what did you call it the one time? Uh, gatekeeping. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were talking about gatekeeping, you know. Like, there's so many great artists here in El Paso. Amazing and a lot of times talent. I feel like maybe they just don't they don't get to showcase because nobody knows who they are yet. So um, we try to afford that over here at Amano, you know. Uh, when we do these exhibitions, some of these young people who are, are just coming out of the woodworks will be, uh, you know, showcasing with other artists who, who have been established here in El Paso for a while. It's awesome exposure for and them. I like the idea that those folks will all like uh, talk and and you know meet each other, mm-hmm. and then you know maybe somebody walks through that gallery and says, "Man, I've never heard of this person. They have amazing work, and we'd like to showcase them later yes. down the road." Yes. So that's what it's really all about. You know, first we're a gallery, but we're also like we have all these creatives within the building, and that's the idea: is that everybody. It doesn't matter what level of artwork you're on uh, or where you feel like you're at. The idea is that. Because we're all in the same place, uh, same place, uh, we can all bounce ideas off of one another, uh, grow. We can do critiques. You know, some of these folks that are into the art scene haven't gone to school and haven't received that education on how some of those things might work. So we try to share our experiences from UTEP or you know the museum or you know just being a street artist, uh, and and hopefully people uh, grow as artists in in the building. Um, we also have. Uh, pro wrestling legacy in yeah. the back. Um, we have uh, Odd Lab. They they're fire dancers. We have David Beatty, who's an amazing ceramist, who's been here in El Paso for forever. Yeah, and he was just looking for a home, and now he's got he's one. got a home there. That's awesome. So yeah, I don't know. It's just 
it's been really awesome just seeing everybody come together uh, in that space and yeah and just really just making making some things happen see it come together huh? yeah you know like and, and we're really open to you know whether it's dance or uh, poetry or it's all art yeah you yeah. know uh, any any type of creativity we'd like to share that with the public you know uh, as of right now we're not we're not charging at the door um, you know for folks to come in and the reason why we do that is because I feel like you know anytime you put a dollar amount on something that's like a deterrent you know and I'm like okay you know maybe we'll just we're going to be posting our QR code if you'd like and you know just a little bit about what Amano is and if people would like to donate that'll be the option at the front door, you know? So that way you're not like, give us money. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, at the end of the day, you got to pay bills. And, uh, yeah. And um, we're trying to do classes. Uh, we're trying to do workshops. But all those materials cost money. Um, this past week, I I offered my own works. I said, hey, I will take, like, any donations for all of my works. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was fortunate enough to get some people to come through. So we've got some ideas for workshops coming up. I'd like We'd like to work with kids, uh, older generations as well. We also have a, a life drawing uh, with Clara uh, on Tuesdays, uh, 6 to 9. So anybody who you know wants to even improve on maybe their figure drawing can come in and, and pay $10. And, That's a great and get price. A life drawing class, yeah. You know? And do you take, so you take donations. If anybody at home is interested in donate, donating monetary donations to the gallery, or supplies, because yeah. art supplies, I'm sure, are, like, very, yeah. very, uh, what am I trying to say? Like, expensive. Yeah. Not expensive, but, like, you, you'd happily take them, right? Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know, they are expensive. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's funny, too, because, like, everything's brand new. Like, we started back in July, um, and the, just the cleaning of this building alone has been, like, this super huge task. Okay. But it's crazy. Like, I was going in. I was like, I got a month before school starts. And then I was just going in and like carrying all this trash out. And next thing you know, like all the artists in there started volunteering and, oh, and clearing good. out trash. So there's this huge sense of like uh, teamwork and community. Everybody wants to build up the space. You know, yeah, it's even, even when people walk into this building who had been in there before are like, I can't believe really like, how awesome this looks. That's you awesome. Know? So yeah, that's just like, you know, really awesome to hear like that people see it's the hard the, work you hard guys work are putting that, into it. Yeah. Building, yeah. Yeah. Um, I used to do a artist and writer showcase series at El Paso Saddle Blanket when I moved back here. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so anything you can do to get the exposure out there, networking, like you said, is so important in El Paso in general. Mm -hmm. um, but to have a like multiple venues, because there are a lot of new galleries popping up in El Paso. Um, so it's really cool to see. That's why I want to invite every all of them here yeah. to let people know, you know, it's not just... Yes, go downtown, go to the International Art Museum, go to, you know, all of our other museums. But there's so many, like, cool little, like, random, awesome pop-up, like, not really pop-up, but they're popping up now. Mm -hmm. Studios everywhere. Yeah. Um, East, West, Central, doesn't matter. You got something very cool. And the amount of talent we have in this city, mm -hmm. the amount of, like pure greatness for art is mm -hmm. it's amazing it's all around us so uh, i'm super excited to come check out your all's gallery and you guys do like bands and things like that so if anybody's wanting to hook up with you guys how do they do that so usually uh you can find us through uh facebook or instagram instagram uh like i said uh, we get more feedback sure there but even like for example if you were looking for a band for an event you know we have valiant blues who's an in-house band um, you know, and hey, we need a band. Well, there you go. Uh, if you were to reach out to us, we could put you in contact with them. You know, uh, or what if bands want to come and play with you? There you go. And and like I said, with the you know with the bands, um, basically I kind of just have this rule where I'm like, look, if my six year old can't listen to it, sure, like you know, like, <laughs> it's a it but, is a family friendly, yeah, yeah, establishment, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you know, for example, and you'll see too, like when you come to our exhibitions, like the the tempo of the music is really low key. Maybe towards the end of the night when Van, uh, Valiant Blues plays, that's kind of like the end of the night. Okay. You know, wrapping it it's up. It's like last but call. But they're a little more picked <laughs> up, you know. Uh, but I like the idea that, like, you know, you start off, like, real low-key. You know, that's when the family people come through, you know, right after dinner. At the beginning, yeah. Yeah, you know, they want to check out the space. And then, all, of course, then the younger folks usually come out when the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> 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 So is there, um, what What do you guys have coming up? I know, I want you guys at home, follow them on Facebook and Instagram, Amano Art Co-op. 
artist co-op, excuse me. Um, and, and what do you guys have coming up? So uh, at the end of the month, uh, we have a art educators uh, show that we're uh, trying to put together right now. I know that they have like some faculty shows. So just uh, getting some of these art teachers. Plus, you know, it's like, what is a mono? Like, we've never heard of it. And, you know, I don't know what that building is. <laughs> so just trying to like, come check it out. Yes. See this, you know, but you know, when people finally walk in there, they're usually like, like oh yeah. I want to be here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> you know? um, so yeah, we have that coming up at the end of the month. Uh, and of course, in October, we have uh, a bunch of different um, event, individual events lined up with artists. Uh, at the end of October, we will do like a Halloween, uh, Halloween art e exhibition Ooh. slash like costume contest, Fun. dance off. Yeah, something like big fun. Halloween party. Yeah, well, Ooh. with a police officer at the door. Hey, <laughs> that, those are the good ones to go to. That's the safe yeah, yeah. one to be no, at. I mean, yeah, you know, it, it, it just goes back to like we want to keep it safe. We yeah, want, this is not wanna... amateur night over here. Right, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. Um, and I do, I'm going to just turn the phone on because this isn't for you, like coming from a mono. And it's coming from me, from Annie. Y'all listening to this. We're El Paso and we're better than this. Um, no last minute cancellations on anything, whether it's a podcast or an art show or anything like that. We're better than that. Um, I just needed to say that just because I feel like there's been so many cancellations lately and I understand things come up, you know. But um, at the same time, if it's just a last minute random, like, oh, I'm kind of shy. Like, no, no, we're better than that. We need to promote our businesses. We need to get out there and, and show our work. So let's let's do this. Let's, we're serious about this, right? Um, so do we have anything else we want to say for Amano? Did we get everything out there? I want to make sure that we hit everything. Any questions? What's the youngest artist you have? I mean, it really doesn't matter as long as the work is, you know, the it meets the criteria and everything. I know you said you have big spaces, small spaces. You have currently have spaces available? Uh, yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. So any artists out there, if you're looking for a home, go to Amano Artist Co-op, check out their spaces and, and talk to them. Yeah. That's all you got to do, right? We just, we, just can, uh, we conduct interviews and just make sure that you're sound of mind. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and that you're a good fit for the, the building. Like okay. I said, you know, we don't, we don't discriminate against like uh it doesn't matter what level of art you feel like you're at you could be a beginner um and that doesn't matter you know the idea is that like hey are you are you a positive person um are you bringing something to the table you know we have caleb jimenez which was one of the first artists in our building and like i said he goes upstairs and he helps everybody else build up their areas it's just so great to see like all these people like coming together and, and, and building it up. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And you guys are putting in everything, you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's, it's all, all it's a community. It's all volunteer yeah. work, you know, like we're just like I said, we're just getting off the ground. So, you know, we're coming out of pocket right now just to get the idea out yeah. there, you know. Well, you guys are doing awesome. Um, I love watching your all's posts. Um, check them out. What's your address again? Uh, 210 Poplar Street. Poplar. Yes. And how do they find you on social media? At Amano. Artist Co-op. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> on Facebook and Instagram. Do we cover everything? I think so. Yeah. All right, nice guys. Time. Thank you so much for joining no me problem. today. I really appreciate your all's time. No, no, thank you. All right, Andrea. Are you ready? No. All right. <laughs> That's the best time of any, right? <laughs> we got this. So tell me, tell me about your baby. I love it, by the way. Like, you oh, guys do some you. amazing work. I've got, like, my stepmom, she is hooked. Like, I've gotten a lot of family. I make everybody go, you guys. <laughs> nice. Yes. I like to always uh, apologize to our new customers for their newfound addiction. Yes. I am not held liable. I am sorry. <laughs> But you're going to be coming here all the time. Yes. You will no longer like any other donut other than ours. <laughs> I love it. And, and you guys have some pretty cool flavors. You, I mean, and it's not just donuts. You have cakes. If you guys have a special event at home. Um, I think we got you guys during Thanksgiving last year. Yeah. Chocolate pie or something like that. That was very uh, good. You, or no, no. It was. You, it, you took our cookie platter? The cookie platter, yes. Yeah. Um, but I, I got another dessert from you guys too. I can't remember. Um, Maybe it was like the pumpkin loaf or something. Yes. Like that. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then you also have like coffees and drinks and stuff like yes. that. Yes. We do all sorts of espresso drinks, uh, 
lemonades, teas as well. We have a huge selection of teas. Delicious. I'm mm-hmm. addicted to them. <laughs> uh, we do cakes, cookies, cupcakes, donuts, pretty much any dessert you can imagine, except for custom for orders. Oh, they take forever, and we don't have a machine <laughs> for those. <laughs> We'd have to do them by hand. Noted. Take, have people hours. asked you for those? Uh, they asked one time, like if we if we have them, and I'm like, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing, yeah. The one thing we won't do. I hear you. But pretty much anything, if you custom order it, we'll make it happen. Yeah. And then for like flavors and what, uh, for like cakes, we also like to say it's like let your imagination run wild. We will make it happen. Yeah. Whatever you guys have you the do. coolest flavors. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us some of your um, current because I know you have that your your flavors switch out. Yes. So with September, we are using all of our new flavors. They are going to be like Mexican inspired just Mm. since uh, on the 16th of September, it's Mexican Independence Mm -hmm. Day. So we decided to dedicate this entire month to Mexican inspired flavors. Mm. Uh, Today we just launched our Cajeta and Galleta Maria uh, donut. Tomorrow we'll be launching another uh, one. We have seven different flavors for this month. Um, I'm sorry. Dom is saying, oh, my God, I just recently had the vegan raspberry black forest cake. It was the best thing I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so I had Thank to get you. that in there for you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes. Yes, we do vegan stuff. That That's big yes. to, to mention because I know, I mean, everybody's – there's a big population now, and everybody's looking for great places to go to. Um, so you can definitely go to Weirdo's Bakery. Yeah, Sorry, we to catch you. always have like at least two vegan options in the desserts. We're trying to expand to have more vegan options available all the time. Mm-hmm. But if you ever want to or- order something, we'll always make it vegan. You're Perfect. like, oh, I like that cookie that you have. Oh, but can we make it vegan? Like, yes, we got you. That's awesome. Like, Everything can be veganized. Yes, pretty much. I love it. Except for the donuts, because it's the same oil. Oh, if you're okay. Okay, with it being the same oil. Then the cakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get you. I get you. Okay. Um, and and I mean, your space. You have a pretty good sized space in there. It's yes, super cute. Go in, <laughs> hang out. Um, tell just tell us about anything and everything you want to about weirdos. Uh, so we like to make it super like comfortable for everybody to come in, feel like they fit in. We don't want to make it be like oh this place feels intimidating for me to order something for me to like be here Mm -hmm. because we've noticed that what before we open we always wanted to bring something to el paso that was a little bit more elevated in the food but we didn't want to have it be intimidating where people were like feeling like I don't know what to order. I'm going to feel like they're going to judge me if I order wrong, if I say something that's not right. It's, and we've like been to different places that have that type of vibe and we try to We don't want to so be like that. It's not that. Yeah. 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 Uh, we also have an art wall <laughs> that we let local artists display their art. Oh, that's well. cool. Yeah. Um, we have right now, I believe like six, if not seven different artists. That's awesome. A few have sold their stuff on there as well, which is nice. It's like, we don't take any commission from that. We That's great. You're giving them a platform. Do whatever That's awesome. it is they do. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, I do have to mention, you guys had, I think at Valentine's, um, but I'm pretty sure you could probably do these whenever, um, the donut bouquet. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. My nieces and nephews, like, I was the champion that day. Aww. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, we were trying to do this, uh, like, have promoted Valentine's, Mother's Day. But again, if you custom order, we can always make one for you. Sure, exactly. Um, So when did you guys start? Because you guys were just Instagram at first, right? Yes. Or at least that's where I found you. Yes. (laughs) We officially opened January 26th. Okay. So just this year is when we first opened, really. Like the brick and mortar? or yeah. Okay. Yeah. And prior to that, when prior did you start? Prior to that, we were just like at-home bakers. Yeah. And then we worked at different bakeries in town. Okay. Um, but Good. mid through the year, uh, I personally left my previous employment due to toxic environment. Sure. And Bianca lost uh, her job due to COVID, okay. unfortunately. Okay. Uh, it was actually in the same location where our place is now. It was hmm. where Fahrenheit 180 was. Yeah. She used to be the baker there. Oh, yeah. okay. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And the owners, like, really loved her and gave her the opportunity to, to buy take out over. the stuff. That's so. amazing. That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> it worked out great, right? You got really lucky. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, that's awesome. So you guys have been baking for a while, and you decided mm -hmm. why do this for everyone else when well, let's do it for ourselves. Yes. And then you're bringing, like, top shelf, cool, different, funky flavors to the table. Um, <laughs> like the matcha donut? I mean, what even? You know, that is cool. You, I mean, it, and it's fun. Like, you got different toppings and different icings, and it's just very good. If you guys have not tried them at home yet, please go and check them out. The holidays are coming up. You, if you guys are looking for stuff for your clients to gift, um, birthdays at work or at school or whatever, these are perfect uh, items to go on and take those special someones. Um, but you guys do run out, right? You yeah, we do. <laughs> because they're that um, good. <laughs> we we sell out. Uh, we don't have like super long hours, so we try not to make too much where we end up having sure. an over stock and then having to. Yeah, and you guys do donate also. I yes. I've seen you don't donate them before. Yes, um, we donate to No Lost Foods. I love them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're, they're really great. They come and pick up and they take all of our donations and they like wrap stuff individually and have them up for yes. people that need them. I love it. Um, and what are your hours and days? Uh, Thursday through, sorry, that's the wrong order. Tuesday through Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday through Thursday, it's 11 to 5. Okay. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 9 to 5. Okay. And close on Monday. Only day. Close Monday. Yeah. Perfect. It's the only day. I love it. It's, well, you need a rest, recently man. Recently hired. <laughs> Oh, but for a long yeah. time, it was just me and Bianca, and we worked every single day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then there's just a hiring issue in general, so I so. completely get that. Um, is there anything else that we want to mention? Did we cover everything? How do we find you? Uh, on Instagram, it's at Weirdos Bake, and it's Weirdos as a pun, like you're weird, but a dough. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time. Yes. <laughs> And then on Facebook? On Facebook, it should be at Weirdo's Bakery. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> did, did we cover everything, guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we cover so. everything? All right. Well, we have one more topic. We got Abel over here. <laughs> it's it's Comic-Con week, yeah, right? Yeah, and I have to read everything off the All right. Corner, sorry. Tell me, tell <laughs> me. <laughs> well, I've, been, I've been so involved in it that, uh, let me this up a little bit, uh, that, uh, you know, I, I uh, I actually meet people on the net that I've never met in person. I don't know if that's happened to you guys. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, I, I met uh, Caden Phoenix, and Caden Phoenix is a producer-director out of uh, Los Angeles, California, lives in East L.A., and uh, she started her own Latina superhero universe. That's so cool. Called oh. Ala Brava, and then I found out that there was going to be a Comic-Con. It was going to be in March, but COVID uh, changed that. So they moved it over to uh, September. As a matter of fact, it's this weekend, happening this weekend wow. at the El Paso Civic Center. You can still go to uh, it's uh, elpasocomiccon.com and, and, and check out all the information there on tickets and everything and the guests. A lot of great guests are going to be there, by the way. But one of the neat things that they're doing, okay, is they're actually having a charity poker tournament. Texas Hold'em Poker Tournament. Uh, and El Paso Comic Con is teaming up with House of King oh, they're Kings, awesome. uh, Card Club, the club to host a charity poker tournament to benefit Mike D's Big Adventure. Mike D is a local DJ who owns and runs Mike D's Big Adventure. Every year, he takes kids with disabilities on a trip. Mm -hmm. That's and, awesome. and, and if you've seen any of the of the media on Mike, uh, Mike also himself was suffers from disability. I don't know if you know who he is. was a DJ. Uh, I don't know if he still is, but a real popular guy and, and so they're doing that along with the event you know and it is so amazing to me there's going to be a costume contest because you know everybody wants to be a Wookiee or, <laughs> or, or they like Wookiee or whatever you know? but, uh, uh, they're, they're going to have that uh, you know and they got all kinds of things that you need to read about if you're going to go dressed up there's also a uh, special needs uh situation uh mobility services uh if you have an animal that you need to be with you uh they, they have that available service all dogs the, all the facility ada information also and, and and you know the whole thing that the people get excited about is the guests and one of the top shelf uh, guests that they're having uh is uh uh gio gio carlo right giancarlo esposito and uh if you know him uh He's been in film, television, he's a stage actor, director, producer with a career spanning nearly five decades. 
Uh, he's well known as uh, by television audiences for his iconic uh, portrayal of the drug kingpin, Gustavo Gus, uh, uh, and all kinds of things. Uh, he's also, I believe, a part of, uh, of Star Wars. Oh, wow. So, so you, know, it's, it's, uh, you know, that's a top shelf thing. Uh, you know, the, these Comic Cons have kind of developed into uh, cultural events. They're, it, it, they started as people who were into comic books, artists, uh, pencil drawers, all that kind of stuff. But they blame it on the San Diego Comic Con <laughs> that it blew up. And it's not just about movies, but uh, in, in some yeah. Comic Cons it is. But uh, so, so there's, you know, it, it, it's who they're bringing, you know. It's a lot of fun. I've yeah. gone many years before. And you get to meet the Blue Power Ranger. David Yost. Oh, watch out. Watch <laughs> and, uh, out. these two guys here, uh, Kellick uh, Safari and uh, John Renke, right? Uh, they, they, were, they were from Tiger King, if you remember that. So, I mean, if you want to meet someone that was in Tiger King, you can, you can come. Uh, just all kinds of wonderful things. Even two, two classic wrestlers, by the way. But it's pretty cool, though, right? Like, you go, uh, there's so many different vendors from a lot of them are from your favorite. Again, you got wrestlers, you got movies, you got comics exactly. um i mean i remember going i have a picture from bane oh i love bane it's from uh batman i'm a total nerd for that stuff man so i'm glad that you mentioned it it is yeah. this weekend yes, it, is. it starts on wednesday or it's happening time? friday okay saturday and sunday awesome. now the thing about Caden, okay is that uh, she's got roots in el paso she's hmm. got family that was here and all that so she's excited to come and she's actually going to talk to the girls over at the young woman's academy Leadership Academy with its Lead Independent School District. It's great. Which is a heck of a school. I went in there and got the tour. And let's put it to you this way. In one classroom, they were doing robotics on the internet against the team in England. Wow. Live, okay? <laughs> and then they took me to the next classroom, and they were teaching them how to make Mexican piñatas. What a, you know, what a, you know, worldwide, course, yeah. you, know, you, you don't know what they're going to get out of it, but they're exposed to these things. That's awesome. They're going to get to, uh, to listen to Caden, two sessions on, on uh, Thursday, and that's going to be exciting. Uh, to, uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, uh, they're going to, uh, the LGBTQ community here is going to have a, a reception for her, and, and uh, oh, awesome. they're going to do some little things with her, and uh, the media is all over it, uh, Telemundo's going to do something, uh, uh, Iris Lopez from Channel 7 is going to feature her on her Sunday feature. Uh, you know, the things that uh, I know how to do. There you go. <laughs> so, awesome. So, so I got them for her, and uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, I haven't really been uh, involved in an event in, in a while. I was going to so. say, if you guys are looking for event promos or anything, make sure to reach out to Abel. Yeah, I could. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I would, it's funny because, you know, no, no knocking anybody, okay, but it's funny that... Uh, they were really pushing for that thing on, on uh, El Paso Street. They had the vendors and all that. Mm -hmm. They had a festival in their hand. Hey, I had one with amusement rides right on that street. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, I know how, how to deal with the downtown management mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. those guys. So anyway, uh, I'm happy to be part of it. Uh, you know, you'll be seeing a lot on, on Facebook, on my Facebook page. Also, DialogueEP.com is a Facebook page along with mine. So you, you, people that follow me, if you want to look for me, it's uh, Abel Rodriguez. And uh, like me, and, and you'll get to see a lot of events that are going on all this week. Yeah. Awesome. Make sure to go to the website, get your tickets, and right. tell them we sent you. Well, Annie, I appreciate that you let me do this. Heck yes. Thank you for everything you do for me, Abel. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. All right, guys, real quick, I do want to mention um, my website is up and going. And if you guys have a business and you're interested in advertising on the website, um, there's plenty of opportunity. Just reach out to me and we'll get you on there. Um, as always, thanks for going local and tell them I sent you. Thanks, guys.